Okay, let's go. Welcome everybody. My name is Krzysztof uh, Tomaszewski and today with my colleague, colleague uh, Jakub Neumann, we would like to uh, talk about how to having OBN at scale and sanity at once. So I guess we are here not without a reason. So uh, we are assuming that uh, you all know what is OBN, how it's worked, at least <laughs> okay. uh, at least on the basic level, uh, we know all these uh, habits and issues uh, about it. And some uh, disclaimers, uh, here we are not affiliated with uh, OVN, uh, we are not uh, developers uh, of this uh, project, it's, so your mileage uh, may vary. And so we are system administrators that are running uh, OVN at scale and all the things that we would like to show you is from our experience uh, from practice. And if you have better solutions for uh, the things that we are talking about, uh, please uh, share with, it, uh, with us. And sorry for the uh, shortcuts, uh, we have limited time and we try to rush a bit because there is a lot to talk about. So first of all, uh, Cloudfero, who we are? So we are open source advocates. We are committed to open source technologies like OpenStack, Ceph, Linux, Kubernetes. We are all European technology company founded in uh, 2015 with a strong focus on uh, upholding European values, laws, and regulations that benefit uh, the community, users, and clients. We are a provider of public and dedicated cloud computing services. We deliver and operate clouds platform for demanding markets such as uh, the European uh, space sector, climate research, and uh, science. We are specialized in storing and processing big data sets. We have uh, more than 100 petabytes repositories of Earth observation satellite data. So we are optimized for massive, massive image uh, processing. And we are in a large scale. Uh, we have over 10 large OpenStack deployments, uh, more than 20 deployments of Ceph, in eight locations across Europe. We have uh, more than 200 compute nodes in a single region, a single uh, availability zone. So we have a high network load due to big data sets from multi petabyte repositories of Earth observations of the data, and relatively high volume of API requests to the computation focused customers. So our infrastructures are all the time active. The changes are occurring. Our network fabric is based on Commodus. Okay, so now a golden, a golden rule. The newer OVN and OVS you use, the better you'll be off, of course. As networking OVN was merged into Wap's neutron code base around Usuri, and there were significant improvements from 2103 and then 2203. There are uh, performance improvements in OVS, but you need to be aware of incompatibilities and upgrading OVN without downtime could be a whole other presentation we could not get into because we don't have the right time right now. So do upgrade and given that, it's important to understand uh, how OVN databases and Neutron communicate. Uh, remember that every single Neutron thread needs a southbound and northbound connection. So in typical setup, it uh, has 192 connections to deal with. Neutron uh, connect, can connect to any of the southbound servers, but uh, only to the leader of northbound cluster. We're using quite inefficient full JSON protocols. Every single connection is a full in-memory copy of OVS database. So OVM load has heavy impact on Neutron. And we got a bad feedback loop that if you add Neutron workers, you can increase connection load on OVM and get way less performance the more Neutron workers you have. So you have to balance the amount of Neutron workers to service your API needs and not cause OVN overload. So to know 
how to balance it, you need some monitoring techniques and tools and you know, need to know what to look at. So the best way is just look at notifications and uh, what your database is doing. It's quite difficult because there will be a lot of events, but it's a built-in method. You can just use uh, built-in commands to uh, monitor uh, several tables. In northbound, we would look at logical switch and switchboard tables. Uh, in both, we would look at database statistics in the uh, database uh, table and server table. And in southbound, where most performance problems live, it's very important to look what's happening in MAC binding, port binding tables, and with heartbeats. On a side note, you can also look at logical flow calculations. The rule of thumb would be that when this, your system is idle, uh, northbound should basically do nothing, and uh, southbound should have around 50 to 100 events per second. If you see any spikes not connected to API requests, then probably something can be wrong. So, the built-in way to monitor, you can uh, use the obvious DB client command to connect to your database and look at events. Uh, do mind the not initial uh, condition. If you don't use it, you would start uh, uh, get whole database dump on the start of connection, uh, which is a lot of unnecessary load and text. So this is the building method, but it's quite important to uh, use some tools to visualize it. By the way, we will be publishing those tools on our GitHub. We didn't get there yet. Uh, so this is an event exporter that exports uh, statis statistics about uh, your OVN instance to Prometheus and can be uh, displayed in Grafana. It's a very good tool to do uh, at a glance diagnosis to look if your OVN maybe was the cause, cause of your problems. Uh, and it's a good tool to view some historical data when, you, data when you're diagnosing something that happens a few hours ago. Uh, you can and also should use OVS package uh, to directly call uh, OVS APIs and look in a more top-like fashion uh, what your OVN database is doing, like mo what Macs are causing events in Mac bindings. Here is an example. Uh, we see that a certain Mac address is pointlessly flapping back back and forth in this particular example. Okay, so why it's important? Uh, no, because usually when you struggle with OVN, uh, what you see is the degradation of your network service performance and quality, and you'll see that the OVN components are skyrocketing with resource usage, and you know nothing. That was the, one of the first issues that we uh, struggled with uh, on the beginning of the play with the OVN. We see that once a while, in a periodic manner, we have a lot of uh, um, resources uh, taken by OVN, and also Neutron was, because of the reason of how it's connected, uh, it's also was, uh, used to CPU a lot. And we needed to go deeper to check what's going on, and we found out that one of the root cause was the Neutron Heartbeat system. So, as you're probably familiar with uh, OpenStack services, most of them are communicated with uh, their agents by some kind of RPC message queue system, usually a rabbit. Uh, OVN, uh, Neutron VN is slightly different, it doesn't use a rabbit. Uh, guess what? It's using OVN to the communication to, for a hybrid system. So what does it mean? Uh, you have uh, three kind of uh, agents, neutron agents, to, let's say, control. Uh, it is OVN controller, uh, two kinds of, uh, for gateway and for compute nodes, and metadata data agent. So to give any information for a neutron, uh, if they are still alive, uh, by OVN message queue, let's say, uh, it's doing this process. If your OVN controller is uh, down, it's pretty significant because you are not able to buy the port on such chassis, I mean a compute host, uh, on which this OVN controller has a problem. Uh, but 
from the others, uh, uh, the other agents, uh, one thing that you are get is not a uh, smiling face on your uh, list for the open spec network agent list. Uh, so this is a uh, time flow for a single uh, request for the uh, heartbeat for a one agent. I won't go for the details here uh, because as you can probably see, this is pretty complicated. It involves several services, like one, two, three, four, five, seven uh, services. Uh, it do many things. It uh, push the message uh, there and forward. And yeah, it's pretty complicated and heavy. So what's then? Uh, when there is a heartbeat uh, involved, when there is a trigger <coughs> heartbeat uh, done by a neutron agent, uh, there is a lot of uh, messages, and you see that uh, soundbound TV. Sorry. Uh, imagine you have uh, 200 uh, computes on your cluster. On which of them you have, let's say, two uh, agents to control. So it's uh, 400 agents to check the status. Uh, let's say it's five uh, messages go for uh, there and forward. There are 500 changes that has to involve OVN and Neutron to check if their uh, agents are alive. Uh, by default configuration, it's happening every 55 seconds. So you will have like 15 request changes per second just to control your uh, hardware system. Question is, uh, is it really important for you to have this information uh, so frequent? In other case, we decided to set it to this value to two hours. So because of the system, it then triggers uh, all this process every an hour, which is less frequent than default 35 seconds. Uh, what's the consequences? It, well, it means that you will notice that your agent is down after two hours. But is it really important? Is it any other better way to control if your computes are dead? than using OVN for that. Probably you have better monitoring system than that. And uh, the consequences will be, yes, you cannot bind a port on this uh, compute. Uh, in the worst case, it will be scheduled three times, and you will end up with a VM in error. And second uh, issue, uh, that we were struggling was uh, the fact that uh, we noticed in a log of OVM components there was a lot of reconnections and timeouts uh, between uh, different components. And like uh, my colleague said, every connection is pretty heavy. It has to download uh, all the data. Uh, it gives uh, another uh, resource uh, in their uh, process. So why is it like that? Uh, it's because of how of the yes, uh, database uh, system works. No. I talk too much. Like that. <laughs> Just talk <don't coughs> loudly. This is big, I guess. <laughs> but it's not the Thank you. 
Yeah, they didn't they configure the inactivity probe on the mics, and now they are reconnecting. It takes a very long time for OVN to do that. <laughs> okay, don't, don't, don't buy a bar for OVN, please. It's perfect. <laughs> Should I continue uh, or? Yeah, just continue. Okay, I'll, I'll try to speak louder. So, uh, in Activity Pro, <coughs> how obvious database system works is that it really likes to know if your client is still up uh, day and it's still uh, live, live, not even it's connected, it's live so by sending a probe to it. And this is also in a, uh, another way. So your client also is checking if your OBS database is uh, live. And please keep in mind, this is one threaded uh, application, one threaded uh, service. Uh, default value for the entity in the most of the configuration of the system of the OBS is five seconds. So if it's somehow easy more than uh, in more than five seconds, what will happen is simply it's connected. Remember, this is a system, but it's in every five seconds it's connected. That won't uh, do any good. And to visualize what it's uh, about, here you can see that OBM system is mainly based on OBS CT system. So every connection here uh, is related to inactivity probe that I was I won't talk about. So on the computer nodes, we have OBM controller that is connected to OBS database uh, server. You have OBM controllers that are connected to some band of, uh, databases or relays. You have a clustering uh, of OBS DB servers in your northbound and southbound DB. You can have relays uh, that are also using this connection. By experience, on a busy system like 100 plus uh, computes, your OBM controller can spend more than 20 seconds doing its job. So default value 5 seconds will simply disconnect it from the database and make it connect again to multiple data, trying to compute what it's supposed to uh, compute and disconnect after five seconds. So it's a never ending story. So it's really important to set your probes uh, in a proper manner. For uh, OVN databases, it's even uh, more, like 30 seconds, sometimes even more, uh, to set for the rough configuration and others. So I won't go for details uh, which uh, configuration variable you have to set. Some of them, there are specific variables to set in configuration, like in obvious uh, other uh, table uh, to configure a specific configuration, or even you have to use something like obvious connection man manager when you are defining that connection to this port on TCP uh, using this IP is defined uh, the way. Please take a look in the documentation. It's pretty well documented, but you have to be aware of that fact. Yes, I Hello, hello. I think it's better. No. No. I'm just loud. Let us go. Just the time is short. I don't know why, but um, it doesn't. It's not connected to the speaker, but it's like in the system. So can you just use the mic? That's going to be weird, but... Not a problem, not a problem. Okay, so let's say a few words about uh, Octavia and OVM, uh, which uh, the problem is faulty and for us can bring down your whole OVM stack with relative ease, because it does send a, a gratuitous R request every five seconds. Uh, from Keep Alive, and also if you disable it in Keep Alive, it also does some some uh, Python magic that send a gratuitous R when they switch. So if your Amphora ever gets in a flapping state because of some misconfiguration or bug, every gratuitous R P U results in a third claim on local controller and a mag binding in every. Uh, every router that sees this address. So, uh, it can uh, snowball into causing very heavy load on OVM, causing dimension disconnects, and basically bringing your whole cloud down. So what to do? 
updater Octavia, as we said, upgrading is the golden rule of networking OpenStack, especially that you can uh, pretty freely upgrade Octavia by itself. Uh, we've run Antelope down to Usuri. Uh, we've heard of people using Antelope release releases even further, and it works without significant issues. Uh, always keep uh, healer enabled. There is no reason to disable it. Use Amphora v2 drivers with persistence because then Octavia will try at least try to finish its processes when something happens. And definitely monitor proactively for any stack load balancers and perform this uh, simple manual fix because there is no uh, dash dash force in the API for reasons. Uh, also, always uh, try to look at your provider network's I, uh, R, ARP levels. If you see a spike in ARP, it's probably worth investigating. Yes. Next things, uh, as we said, OVN is a single thread application. Every of those applications can only use one core and do one thing at a time. So Southbound can have uh, around 450 connections for 200 computes. It's taking care of uh, a lot of different things. And it spends a lot of time writing and sending those JSON notifications. If uh, you get reconnects, you can f easily fall into a loop when it can't finish before it reconnects again. And uh, it's big trouble when scaling. So we introduce, uh, realize that there are a feature uh, of OVSDB into our configuration. They are, they are basically proxy DBs for OVSDB, a lot like, for example, proxy SQL but uh, for OVSDB servers. Uh, they are very good at just uh, pushing notifications further. Write is supported, but it's heavily discouraged because the delays in uh, writes are quite big. Uh, we suggest to use it only for your compute nodes because Neutron is much more prone to uh, breaking due to the delay of the proxy if there is no consistency, but for computes it works very well. A good start with numbers is a cluster of real realize per each 50 computes. So then all the processes on the compute nodes uh, just get their notifications from the relay and the load on OVSDB cluster uh, is significantly lower than it is when everything tries to connect to a single southbound leader. Another thing, Neutron and OVN are basically two sources of truth about the network. Uh, it should be that Neutron controls configuration and OVN controls state, but in the reality both do so. And uh, as usual, if two sources of truth, despite uh, best efforts of Neutron, uh, northbound DB will probably diverge from uh, Neutron's SQL. So you do need to monitor the database for orphaned objects, which can cause pretty nasty bugs. For example, reserving uh, uh, address uh, space on a port that does no longer exist in Neutron and making new ports unavailable or stuff like that. Uh, you can just monitor that directly in the database via the exporters and you should probably run the sync tool quite often, at least in the log mode or in repair mode. Uh, Neutron runs it in log mode when it starts. An important thing is uh, if you run it with repair mode, it do increase the uh, OVSDB connection timeout because uh, the default is so low, it won't definitely repair your database uh, without this switch if you have any kind of scale. Okay, another part of OVN network uh, based system. Uh, probably you are familiar with the uh, concept of network node, uh, which are kind of central point on 
switch them. There are your router gateway ports for your uh, digital routers, simply. So if you're a customer using local network and would like to uh, get some data from uh, outside from internet, they are probably uh, going through the network node. Uh, those gateway ports are working in active backup mode. Uh, so on one of the uh, network nodes, there is an active instance of uh, router gateway port. On the another, usually two of them, uh, there are backups. Uh, this state is controlled by uh, BFD protocol. Uh, so what's happening when BFD protocol detects some uh, uh, not normal situation with your network node? Uh, it's telling all the system to switch one uh, port from uh, active to backup to switch the network node. This is pretty costly uh, because if you have 300 uh, routers in your infrastructure, so you have like 100 router gateway ports on one network node inactive, if it's plans well. So it means that for every router gateway port, you have to send the messages a notification for OVN, but also to update binding on Neutron uh, in Neutron database. So it's like 100 operations in OVN, 100 operations in a network uh, Neutron uh, DB. So yes, this is costly. This is why you have to really keep, eye, keep an eye on your tenant uh, network uh, underlay and uh, status of your network node. The worst scenario is if you somehow losing a network node for a short uh, period of time and it's uh, off, every um, balancing is happening, but then suddenly it's back after like a second. So you have to bring that active ports back on this uh, network node. If it's happening a lot, like a few times a uh, second, you can be flooded by the changes in OVN and uh, Neutron, which of course cause the resources and uh, system availability. So, you have to keep an eye on your network node performance if there is no uh, network saturation. So, if you are start to saturate your tenant network, your uh, network node, so through the two nodes, there are too many information going through the network node, uh, you can start to drop in packages and between them, it can happen that there are BFD uh, protocol packages which cause the uh, switch of uh, active ports. Second thing is that similar, you can uh, have dropped packages just because you are overusing this network node by CPU usage. And this is not ex exactly that you have to have 100% usage of every core. If you are unlucky, you can just saturate one thread that is doing the, this network queue that is processing BFD. Uh, the thing is the same. Your network node will be kicked out from the cluster. So, please keep an uh, eye how it's behaving. Uh, is there any solution to that? Yes, you can also try to distribute load uh, between those network nodes. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you have to have the same count of the uh, router gateway ports on the uh, network node, but just to have a reasonable level of resources. So you may have one network node with two, three heavy customers and 200 uh, on network uh, gateway ports on another one. How to change it? Uh, usually it's a pretty uh, fast uh, operation. By using uh, uh, CTL comment from the OVN, you can change the priority uh, of your uh, gateway chassis. And there is specific comment for that. Or you can play directly by yourself in the gas of the uh, OVN configurations. So, uh, how much time we have? Could we just uh, push the limits? Because we are the last. Um, so, if you are interested, we can go because we have several other cases that we could cover. Yeah, we have uh, two slides here if we have time, so uh, the raft one and the uh, OVN as distributed switch, but we would be uh, interested in uh, questions and to... Uh, oh, we have time. Oh, I misunderstood. Then, obviously, uh, raft, the clustering mechanism of uh, OVSDB. As I think you should familiarize yourself if you run a large cluster. Every 100 transactions on the data database, there is a snapshot. 
to snapshot, it needs to invoke a leader change. And when leader change happens, Neutron tends to reconnect, which, as we said, it's not a good thing to happen. Uh, between Yuzuri and Yoga, uh, it uh, cost a lot of costly uh, re uh, relearning of the database. Since Yoga, a change was backported. It's basically since Antelope that was backported to Yoga, uh, that it can pick up from the last lock point in Raft, so there is a lot of less hassle, but it's still quite a difficult time for your OVN cluster when the snapshot happens, so you can uh, consider uh, fine-tuning these values to have uh, snapshots uh, less often or to have larger Raft timeouts. Stabilizing under any form of loads is quite hard for Raft, if the databases, as they are single-threaded processes, are under heavy load and the raft, raft cluster needs to re-elect a leader, it might go out of its timeout, so it's another timeout to increase. The command to check raft status is here. Um, you mostly need to look at the connections at the last election reason, which will give you a reason the last election happened. And if you get into a circle disconnect situation we mentioned, pretty much the only thing you can do is bring down the whole raft cluster and start it one node at a time again. Okay, so this case is kind of uh, your network arch architectural uh, related. I don't know how many of you are using uh, MCLAC and LACP uh, for responding on your own Connect your network no, network nodes and computes uh, to your uh, network uh, spine. So this is uh, what we were fighting uh, recently. Uh, we noticed a flood of binding events uh, on Solvang DB, uh, especially for the logical router ports. So it's also related to network node. Uh, this is happening because uh, we are using Fabric uh, with Anycast Gateway IP. Sorry if I go for it too deep for, for, with the details. Uh, it is because of the situation your gate one, on leaf uh, one you have a gateway with IP on a MAC XXYY and on two you have the same IP but with uh, MAC XXZZ. Uh, so OVN is behaving like one big distributed switch. If you receive IRP uh, package uh, from leaf one with, this, uh, with its uh, MAC address, uh, OVN will learn that this uh, MAC belongs here and it should uh, send information to the gateway with this proper MAC, of course. But if you have a fabric and an ACAS IP, the same request can go also from LIF2. And even uh, to the network node uh, gateway B, it will learn for the same IP another MAC address. So if you have many requests of our addresses going from LIF1, LIF2, your OVN will start to learning once uh, Mac uh, YY and uh, other case so ZZ. So you have to be careful how much uh, request of RP uh, you are receiving because if you have like scan from the outside, uh, you will be flooded by uh, events of Mac binding, which are representing uh, learning mechanism. So how we deal with it? For now, we are black holing unused public IPs which means that if there is a uh, request to your uh, cluster of floating IP that it's not used, our routers simply are not pushing it to our uh, OVN infrastructure. Uh, so this is like uh, one solution. Uh, it's working because the worst case is uh, uh, for unused IP, your ARP request never will be cached. It's fine if there is uh, IP existing, your uh, ARP uh, request will be responded by the OVN, so your uh, fabric will learn uh, that it's existing and it will be cached for, I don't know, default 300 seconds, so it's not so uh, significant. Uh, so like I said, for unused IP, better to not push it to OVN. Of course, the best solution, limit L2 domain for your uh, architecture, use uh, L3 DC concept, if it's possible. So, uh, no. so now if anyone has any questions, we provided a short summary of topics we were 
uh, talking about any questions? No questions, I guess. Then, thank you very much for coming here and listening. Feel free to discuss with us. We're around the event. Feel free to contact us if we, you have some uh, questions. As I said, the tools we mentioned, the exporter and the uh, OVN uh, top mechanism will uh, be eventually published on our company uh, GitHub. So feel free to use them then. And have a nice day and a nice conference.